What do you, what do you mean? Oh, this is the, this is the stain. That's fruit wood. You that's love fruit wood. Yeah, but that's maple. This is Douglas fir. That's a completely different. You don't like it? I don't love it. You're, no, you're kidding. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to episode 12 of the Concrete Slab House Reno. If you're brand new to this channel, we are transforming this concrete slab house, house that says on a concrete slab, and transforming into something awesome. Episode 12 is what we're kicking off here. We have this vision of transforming a formal living room into a bonus room. The first thing we did was put up these walls. If you haven't seen the video, make sure you go check it out. But in the meantime, we have to make this its own room and one of the final finishing touches to actually start creating its own rec room, bonus room, whatever you wanna call it, is a set of doors and these are gonna be huge. But first, let's talk about the sponsors of today's video, Bloomscape. Bloomscape is the modern garden center that delivers the largest quality of plants from the greenhouse to people's homes. Founded by a family of horticulturists dating back five generations, Bloomscape has figured out a way how to bring the greenhouse online with patented shipping technology, making them one of the only shipping services that delivers plants of all sizes across the United States. Now, you guys already know, dating back a few videos, about a month ago, I got my first Bloomscape kit in the mail. It was incredibly easy to use. I picked out the flowers, I picked up the soil, I picked out the pots that it all goes into, and it came and delivered to my house safely. I put it all together. It was actually kind of enjoyable. I'm not, I don't really have a green thumb at all. They gave me excellent instructions how to take care of them, and let me show you how they're doing so far. Bloomscape now offers Bloom Kits, which allows for you to pick and choose these naturally curated kits with the plants, the add-ons, the, the soil, the, even the tools that are needed to get the job done. And the best part, all these plants are curated in a way that depends on where they're gonna be living in your home. As you can see, the Bloom Kits are completely customizable off of size and color and whatever needs you have where you wanna plant them. If you're not ready to plant now, you can buy now and plant later after the last frost, depending which part of the country you live in. So, do yourself a favor, head over to bloomscape.com or just click the link in the description below. Use my promo code MrBilly to get 20% off your first order of Bloomscape of $100 or more. Without wasting any more time, let's get back into this video. Let's go. Okay, so the plan for this door, chevron pattern, but the difference is gonna be, it's gonna have a center style. It's gonna be 10 feet, at least 10 feet tall because we have to you know, close the whole door, but we're gonna say 10 feet, six inches or 126 inches total. We got our lumber here, two by sixes, Douglas fir. I just asked Tyler how much all this was. What was it? 600 bucks. 600 bucks for 25 two by sixes by 10 feet long. I don't know, we might sell it for like five grand. Rocking the Crocs, cause you know, it's summertime. We're gonna start with the Crocs, hit it with the shorts. And I'm sure it's a video or two away before I start doing tank tops. The best way not to waste material is I think each board, I'm gonna have to individually cut at 45 degrees and then be very strategic to, to do these glue ups. So the miter 45 degree here, I, it still takes away too much material. This is supposed to be a 45 inch door and I made all those cuts. Okay, so I got a, a last minute idea and I cannot believe this works. So if we move the angle from 45 to 30, nothing much, check out what happens. I want to get these smoother. So I have a thickness planer. I'm gonna run these boards with a thickness planer so I get rid of a lot of these imperfections. Though the thickness planer did get rid of the radius, there's still a little bit. Here's what I'm gonna do, you don't have to do it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it on my thick, on my joiner here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna create, take like a 16th, why do I keep saying create? It's just gonna take a 16th of an inch off, creating an, on both sides, creating a nice, perfect uh, two pieces to join together. I'm gonna get glue on both sides, a liberal amount, tie bond. Three is what I'm using. It's usually some of the strongest stuff up there. And I'm just using this as a guide to make sure that everything is still staying within the right degree mark. Get a clamp here and here, let it set for maybe 30 minutes, then I'll take it off and then start the next glue up. That way I won't take me like a week to do this. Any 
good plan. Ditch these. Okay, we'll squeeze it out. Now we need one on this side, and this might work. All right, new plan. We're gonna use a ratchet strap. We got it! I know not a lot of people can go get this tool. It's a pricey tool. So this is called the Festool Domino. So you would apply pressure and puncture a mortise inside a piece of wood, put wood glue on the pieces, including those mortise holes, jab one of these tenons inside of it that expands after the wood glue hits it, and then you can actually start using your clamps or your ratchets to tighten it together without having it disalign now I also did one extra, I clamped it down to the table to keep, because the clamps will keep it arched. Last piece in order to make it a little bit over 10 feet tall, uh, glue it on. Same strategy, ratchet straps, straps with the screws. It's actually working really well, putting counterweights to keep it from flexing up. I have to trim this off to match this flat part here, right? I'm gonna use a track saw. If you don't have a track saw, use like a one by four trim baseboard piece, clamp it down and regular skill saw it works just fine. This whole track saw situation is not working because I have to move it multiple times in order to get the full length. And there's variances, right? So you'll have high spots, low spots. So I just, I did what I told you guys to do. Just grab a one by four MDF specifically. Uh, one by four is enough to keep it wide enough from bending. And uh, MDF is not gonna start bowing out on you like a, a pine piece of trim wood. And I'm just gonna run my circular saw around this um, just to get a nice, good, clean cut. This is the part where we're gonna start putting these styles on. I think I'm gonna use these dominoes like we did before. Um, I mean, I could just do a glue up, but here's the only fear behind it. It's totally fine to do a glue up uh, side grain to side grain. Uh, but whenever you have end grain involved, the side grain ends up sucking in the, sucking in, sucking in the majority of the wood glue, kind of like straws or flowers in a vase. Um, so the best uh, action is gonna be to reinforce it and then a little bit of wood glue, and it should hold up for a while. Keep in mind, clamps, when they squeeze, they make it kind of bow out. So you can put clamps on top to counter the bow, but you have to adjust the pressure from below. So I'll have to ease off this one a little bit to tighten up the top one a little bit to find the good in between. This has to be the biggest uh, glue up to date. <laughs> I think Kyle just mentioned that. He's like, you and your glue ups. I think we can get bigger, man. This is 10 foot, six inches. Now we gotta, we gotta push the limits. We're gonna trim it off right here. There will be small pieces that I'll have to just connect and I can just CA glue and wood glue together and it'll be plenty strong. You heard me say CA glue and you're like, how does that gonna work? You can use CA glue with an activator and what it does is you put a little dabs just to hold it in place like a clamp until the glue activates from your wood glue and then secures in place. So for this process, you will need regular wood glue, CA glue, and the activator, and a LaCroix. So you're gonna put some wood glue here, wood glue there, CA glue around, wood glue here, wood glue there, wood glue there, CA glue around. This is very runny CA glue. Usually I get the creamier ones that, now, oh. Spray your activator on the spot you're gonna be putting in, just because if I spray it here, it's gonna be already glued. Pop it in place, and just like that, it's there. We're gonna wait for the glue to dry, and then we can start trimming them off and sand. So remember, the moral story, or the theme of this build is uh, wood bends, right? When you put clamps on it, the same thing is happening to these end pieces, these rails. So I'm using uh, one by two material. You can use anything, but uh, you can clamp it and I'll straighten it out for you. If it dries crooked like that, guess what? You're gonna have a funky door. Okay, so we're getting ready to sand and I've given a little test run with a sander. I have a pretty aggressive sander, but these uh, bumps, they're, they're kind of substantial. I'll be here for hours. Got myself a little bit a while ago, a uh, power planer. And what it is, is instead of that handheld push one with a blade, this has a rotating blade. You can set the depth height of this blade and then you will be able to shave off the uh, crazy transitions, making it easier to sand it afterwards. I think I paid something around 90 bucks for this at Home Depot, uh, but well worth its weight in gold. I'm gonna give it a quick run and then we'll start sanding with about 80 grit. Here's a little trick I've seen and I use it regularly. I'll just take a pencil and I'll scribble 
all around the table. Then you come in here and then you basically sand at a consistent rate. So the scribble marks, you're sanding them off and it'll give you kind of a good measuring rod that you're sending everything equally. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so everything's got sanded to 220. Now, when it comes to staining wood species like uh, pine or Douglas fir or maple even, it tends to be blotchy. A pre-stain essentially creates this uh, uh, almost like a, a gel-like coating to allow for the uh, stain itself to be absorbed almost like a little bit more of an even rate. Apply a nice even coat, let it sit there for, I believe the instructions say like a couple of minutes, um, and then wipe off the rest off, and then we'll be ready to uh, put some stain on. First coat of a uh, conditioner, or pre-stain as I like to call it, is on. Excess was wiped off after sat for about 10, 15 minutes. Stain. This is the go-to step. I've used it on a sliding barn door, barn, barn door, barn door. That's how you say that word. Um, I've used it on uh, the bottom part of the kitchen island. Irina's approved go-to stain. I refuse to try anything else because she's probably not gonna like it. Give it a coat, flip her over, she'll be done. So I got really excited with the stain and uh, Irina came home, double checked with her. Turns out I used the wrong stain. Uh, she wanted fruit wood from Minwax. And um, what does that mean? I had to sand this all down again, strip it down. Finally, the right stuff. This is the stuff we need. Okay, so everything's stained. This is the hardware that I got. I have to match these sliders, um, hardware, on top. And then once I do that, I could put up the, uh, the backer board or whatever you want to call it because we can't just attach the rail to the drywall. It'll bend, it'll squeeze, it's not safe. You got to put like a backer piece and then um, put the railing on that. Very important. The spacing here, <laughs> make sure you can lift your tape or your uh, door up and get it in place. One time I've installed, whoop, there, there we are. One time I've installed these, this hardware in a way where it was so tight that you couldn't slide it on this way. So I it was forced to feed it through the side. So the very first time I've ever installed sliding barn doors, uh, there's a piece in the kit that I didn't install and that's this bottom slide. And what this is for is when the door goes, hangs on the rails, the bottom can still swing, which is actually really dangerous because kids can push it and the thing could possibly fall off. You can create a channel right in the middle of the door for this thing to slide as a rail to keep it from moving side to side. All right, so we're gonna get a few coats of clear coat on this. So I'm using a polyacrylic right here from Minwax. It's a satin, a couple of coats. I'll dry, flip her over, do it again. And then I think we'll be ready to start hanging this thing. Okay, so we're gonna start hanging up the railing part. It's a three piece, which I've never done before. It looks pretty simple. It connects uh, through a little bracket up front. We'll see how strong it is for these heavy doors. But uh, we got these lag bolts that we marked out exactly where the studs are, but even though we have this backer piece, it's gonna be like an extra cushion that in case my uh, studs don't line up, we at least get it into the wood and not the drywall. But um, this is gonna go through the railing and then on the back side, it'll have this little spacer to keep it away from the drywall. Yeah. Okay, so plan B, exactly. I told you guys have the spacing between the pulley and the wood far enough. And I still didn't give it enough. I don't know what happened, but anywho, we took the center railing off. We're gonna slide it on, then put the other Man, I can't talk right now. Put the other door on, then put the center railing in, and that's our only option. What you wanna do is take these, this is exactly why I created this line here, or this little channel. We're gonna put it right there, right? kind of, I don't know, a few inches in. And what's gonna happen, we don't need two of them, but keep one here. Therefore, when it opens or closes, it always has one point of contact within this uh, door. That way you don't have to think about lining anything up. What do you think? It's good, when are you gonna stain it? What do you, what do you mean? Oh, this is, the, this is the stain? That's fruit wood. 
You that's love fruitless. Yeah, but that's maple. This is Douglas fir. That's a completely different. You don't like it? I don't love it. You're, no, you're kidding. Hun, this is the stuff you always go with. No, it's not the same. You told me the color of the island. We've stained so many things with fruit wood. Our last sliding barn door at our last house was fruit wood. But it looked different. Are you serious? <sighs> you want me to be joking? Do you need me to sand this? How much do you love me? Oh my God. Guess what I'm doing? I'm sanding the sucker down. Um, these being the hardest doors I've ever built in my life, um, I don't think it's good enough for, oh, I kind of like these doors, so I, I gotta make it perfect for her. Um, and also, I'm like a thousand bucks into this, so it, it, it better look exactly how she wants. Let's sand on. We had a last minute idea of going with a gel stain. It looks like pudding, right? This is a white, um, and then this one is a colonial maple. We're just kind of eyeballing it 50-50, um, and then it's coming out this beautiful like almond, almost like a, uh, a mudslide from uh, Applebee's or something. What I'm using is these uh, flush mounted poles. Um, I'm gonna have two of them on the inside. And then uh, I'm gonna trace them out, put a little tape on here just for tear outs and I don't scratch the rest of the paint. And I'll use a little uh, cutting bit on my uh, palm router, cut it out, put it in place, and the inside should be done. And that was so good. <laughs> so much work. Thanks. Thanks. Guys, these doors came out so freaking good. I am over the moon about the stain and just the overall aesthetic. I did want to address one thing is, do you see these little cracks and stress marks? The most interesting thing is we didn't have them before and they kind of start developing as maybe it acclimated to the temperatures here. But the most fascinating thing is it cracked everywhere but our seams, which tells wood glue is so much more stronger than whatever's happening here. And you know what? I'm not worried about it because the doors are hanging strong and these Fracture marks are actually, well, they're actually adding a little bit of character to this door, so I'm really excited about that. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around watching yet another one of my videos. It means the world to me, guys. We're having so much fun remodeling this house room by room, turning a formal living room into an actual rec room bonus room. Make sure you stick around for the next episode where we get to put some board and batten walls to give it a lot of really cool details and just really make this room pop. If you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell that way you'll be alerted exactly when these videos drop. Connect with me on all my social media, all the links will be down in the description below, as well as the merch section, all help support this channel. Tune out this week, we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya, bye.